For the best in the world, winning is the easy part. Training is where it counts. You're watching Train to Win. Long distance running is both the easiest and most difficult of sports. And while it's practiced all over the world, Kenya is number one. In my opinion, there's no better place in the world for me to try and reach my potential as a runner. Kenya has won almost three times as many Olympic medals as any other nation in distance events. Further analysis of Kenya's wins finds that of the winners, around 70% of them are descended from one tribe, from the Rift Valley, 300 kilometers north of the capital, Nairobi. It's quite simple, uh, actually, to, to be a coach here. Um, who am I to, to tell the Kenyan athletes how to run? I mean, they run like antelopes already. You know, some people think, because a Kenyan has so much talent, oh, it's so easy to train them. It is not. There's no easy way, there's no shortcut, there's no secret. E10 in Kenya is famous for running. The place is two and a half thousand meters up and has miles of deserted mountain roads. It's the perfect place to train for distance running, and everyone here does just that, including local Emma Cheptenui. I'm going to participate in eight kilometer senior women. Uh, I'm afraid of champions like Lynette Maison, Masai. I think she'll be there participate, participating with me. So, of course, I'm ready to challenge her. I think I'm in good shape. I am using this to see how speed is. I'm preparing for because I, I want to. Uh, to, to see if I have catch up and to, to see how I can perform well because I am preparing for other 10 kilometers races and 15 and 21 kilometers races for January and for December. I'm preparing this meal. I decided to take Suja because it's a a special burger for us. This doesn't have any acids like skuma, so I decided to take this one and also cook ugali versus milk. I'm well prepared for tomorrow. I think I'll do better. Like the majority of Kenyans, Emma and Edna don't have much money. Most Kenyans survive on less than a dollar a day. With so little to lose and the offer of prize money for winning races, many Kenyans give professional running a try and they take training seriously. My normal program maybe is uh, like Monday, we always go one hour, 40 minutes. Tuesday is uh, the day for speed work intervals. Uh, it depends with which, uh, what are we going to do by then, like, maybe at, at last the Tuesday you are having 1,000 times 10. So, when is the day? We normally go 1 hour 20, moderate, and Thursday we go for public. Fridays we are going 1 hour 10, easy. Then Saturday it's the time for long run. I'm going to eat, uh, pray and go to sleep early so that I can wake up tomorrow very early in the morning to prepare for the race. Race day dawns on the dozens of athletes who've turned up to compete. This is a small race, but competition will be fierce with a $600 prize for the winner. Yes, they are awarding 
position one to six, yes. And then from six to position 50, I think it will be small prices. For now, I've started even to to have some fear because I've, I've seen that yeah, in, in the field, that uh, those senior athletes, those champions, they are there for the position. I am I, I am hoping for a good position, but I don't I don't know what what position I, I am going to take it. But it will depend. Uh, for for the last one week, I decided to come and run to see the speed. But for for the other time, I was not prepared. But now I'm fully prepared, and that is it. Emma finishes in 60th place, a testament to just how fast Kenyans run at every level of competition. Stay with us to find out how Kenyan runners train and how the rest of the world wants in on the action. is a remote part of the Kenyan countryside, located high in the mountains surrounding the Rift Valley. In the last 30 years, the combination of altitude and miles of mountain tracks have made it a mecca for long-distance runners to come and train. Among the international stars and colourful locals is one man who's a bit of both. I knew little or nothing about the technicalities of the sport. Uh, I just knew it as an form of entertainment and uh, watching performances on TV. I did have an interest in sport and an interest in coaching young people. And um, when I came to Kenya, uh, I just came as a regular teacher. It had nothing got to do with the fact that I, I had an interest in sport or, or, or even coming to St. Patrick's didn't um, have any significance in terms of the school having uh, an athletics tradition. But I found myself in a place like Iten which was a fairly rural, isolated area at the time, in 1976. Um, and uh, the school did have the beginnings of an athletic tradition. So when I came along, I looked like a likely candidate for somebody who had an interest in sports to get involved in athletics. And uh, they approached me and uh, said, well, we're in a school that has the beginnings of a tradition. There is an athletics team. So uh, you look like a, like a person who might uh, be able to continue with the programme. St Patrick's School in E10 now has a sporting tradition to rival any in the world, thanks to Brother Colm. In the 1980s, we had the emergence of, of international youth programmes. So I was asked to select the Kenyan team. I took 12 athletes to Athens. We won four gold medals, a few bronze and a few silver began to realize that at junior level, we are formidable. From that kind of kicked off the idea that the place to really work with young athletes is at youth and junior level, start at grassroots. And that's basically when I really now became convinced of what I was already doing, but it gave a new impetus to the way I was thinking about it. St. Patrick's has a tradition where a tree is planted for every athlete from the school who wins a major event. Today, the school is home to an arboretum of success. A 
the same time, remember, the sport was becoming professional. So young people could see, OK, not only will it help me to further my education as a motivation, not only will it help me to uh, get a track scholarship to America, not only will it help me to even get employment in Kenya, it also could be seen as a career. I can make money out of it. So you had a sudden upsurge of young people seeing now athletics very positive, much more than just a sport or an entertainment. Or it also gave me recognition as a superstar, celebrity status. It also gave me uh, a, a standing in my community. It also meant I could go back to my local community and invest money. I could educate my siblings. I could house and, 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 and take care of my family. I can build local facilities like you have schools and uh, clinics and hospitals uh, funded and supported by athletes, etc. So suddenly it took on a whole new image. I was in this school, I finished my high school in 2005. Anybody can run, but now to convert somebody into fully an athlete, it needs, he, one needs to have a, to start from somewhere. Uh, start running easy, and then just getting fit. First you shed out some weight, and then you now trim somebody to have some strength, to, quite, to develop some speed in him or her, and then, that's why we, are, we, we go now to apply exercises, uh, uh, flexibilities, because when you run for a long time without exercises, you get fatigue, you get some injuries. Since Brother Colm put E10 on the map, training camps have sprung up around the Rift Valley. Brother Colm, I think, has contributed a lot to changing E10, especially in this uh, developing of junior athletes and young athletes within this area. It's a big, big challenge. I have never trained any nationality other than Kenya. And I don't think uh, I'd be interested in, in, in taking on the training of a European athlete or even an athlete from another African country. Because I think I learn my athletics from the athlete, not from a book, not from a college, the athlete. My name is Lona Kiplagat. I am born Kenyan, training in Iten, but uh, naturalized uh, Dutch. We are here now at the moment in the High Altitude Training Center, which is located in Kenya, uh, nearby Eldoret. It's 350 kilometers away from Nairobi. Um, at in Iten is uh, is 2,500 meters high, and uh, here a lot of champions are training. We have athletes from all over the world, uh, a lot of Kenyans all over Kenya come here to train because it's a, it's a very good environment for training. The altitude is right, it's not too high, it's not too low, and here is where we get the opportunity to really push when we are training for, for our competition. We train very hard. We believe in ourselves, we concentrate, we only train, sleep, eat, and train. So welcome the rest of the world, come join us. We want to beat us, but uh, I promise you uh, it will take you a lot of effort before you take over from us. Peter is my husband. He, we have this training camp since 2000 and we've been privileged to have the best in the world to train here. The first time actually that we met was April 1997 in the London Marathon. I used to be a director of global marketing for a sports company, American sports company, and we had her on the contract. She was running there and I was there for, uh, to see my sponsored athletes. So that's the first time we met and I think from the end of 1997, early 1998, we, we were together. In 1997, Lona ran her, uh, her first marathon. 
in uh, Los Angeles and she won that race actually and with that money she built a house for the parents and the second thing she bought a small plot in E10 in Kenya with the idea that if she would ever have the money she would start a training center for young talented girls because by that time most of the girls were training in, in training centers with mainly men and they had to do all the work in the in the training centers so to cook to wash the clothes the shoes and other strange things so she said we have to protect these girls so if i have the money i will start a training center so in 1998 she won again the la marathon and with that money she started this this training center and she invited young girls who came from secondary school to train here and to live here and to study here under the most ideal circumstances. And slowly by slowly, more and more foreign people asked, like, can we train there because we want to understand the secret behind the Kenyan success. And the girls went out, they started their own family, they started their own career. Some of them are really top athletes at the moment. And slowly by slowly it changed into, uh, into a real training center. And right now we have mainly foreigners here. If you come to Kenya, there's really only one place to come if you're a runner is a 10. And if you come to a 10, there's only one place to come, which is the Lorna Kiplegat Center. Um, just to be surrounded by the top runners, to interact with them, to, to, to improve my own running, and just to be inspired by the local community here. Um, and I loved it so much within, I think I'd only been here three or four days, and I was already saying to Peter, what can I do to stay here longer? Like I, I, I was here for 10 weeks, and after after three or four days, I was already I was already saying I, I don't want to go home after 10 weeks. I I want to stay in Kenya. What can I do? How can I help? What can I do to be involved? When I came in 1997, 1998 to E10, there was basically nothing. There was only one person coaching here, and that's Brother Colm O'Connell. So Brother Colm was really at the base of of, of athletics in uh, in this area. And when we started with our training center, you saw that many, many people came to train here. And yeah, right now we have 800 to 900 athletes. And you see if there is a champion that will attract other people. And now we have so many champions here. I believe from, I think we had 17 medals in the world championships in Daegu. And 14 of them are from this area, um, which is unbelievable. A lot of runners come here to stay, uh, stay at the camp. Uh, mainly Western runners, but then also we have the gym facilities here at the camp which are open to people staying at the camp for accommodation but also open to the local runners in the community. Uh, so a lot of Kenyan runners will come into the camp in order to use the gym facilities uh, and I work in the gym um, doing, doing group exercise sessions in core stability uh, and also work one-to-one -one with some of the very top athletes uh, doing personalised personalized sessions with them, working on their stability, their strength, uh, and basically trying to increase their efficiency when they run. I always loved athletics, and um, although I was a very bad athlete by myself, but I've always been a big fan of, of athletics, and I became a coach later on. It's quite simple, uh, actually, to, to be a coach here. Um, who am I to, to tell the Kenyan athletes how to run? I mean, they run like antelopes already. I think as a coach here in Kenya, the only thing you have to do is listen very well to the athletes and just bring structure in, 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 and, and planning in, in, uh, in their workouts. That's the most important thing. And I believe very important is um, the motivation. You have to motivate them. Still to come, we see Kenya's finest in action at the high-profile CAS Marathon with a prize fund of 17,000 US dollars. runners can be found in every country on earth but nowhere in such abundance as in E10 in Kenya. This small town sees the best in the world come to train among locals who give them a run for their money. Today the Cass Marathon has attracted both amateurs and professionals. My name is Sekel Kimboy, world champion, Olympic champion. I just won recently in Daegu, South Korea. 
and my name is Premin Gubuta. 2008 Olympic champion in Beijing. I think to maintain a win or to win is to be self-disciplined, uh, to train hard, to take everything easy, and uh, to stay focused. Watching from the sidelines is easy, but for the competitors, the race is a grueling 26 miles in unforgiving Kenyan sunshine. When you are running against your partner, he's also fit and you're also fit. So it, now it goes to who is stronger or who is going to sustain that the, the strength for longer. Athletics is it's something which you just it will just sort it you sort you out. You don't have to complain that oh this guy did something no. It's your ability. The eventual winner is 23-year-old Paul Coach. I've been training so strong. You've been training? I've had training, yeah. Mm. How yeah. long have you been training? Uh, maybe I started when I was in school. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. I was uh, 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. The marathon was hard, but I tried my best, yeah. Yeah, I tried to go with my, my pace, yeah. yeah. What I would, would advise young young children who want to do athletics is, is to focus. Um, athletics is, 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 is a great sport. Everyone can do it, no matter from what part of the world you are living in. If you have money, if you have no money, everyone can run. I would still single out Peter Ronald as the person who uh, surprised me most in terms of making the maximum use with what would appear to be um, limited talent. But what he lacked for in talent, he made up for in commitment and focus and determination and motivation and the willingness to succeed and running with his head rather than with his legs. Since athletics is, is a sport and it will not, it will, I don't see it coming to an end soon, because we are there and uh, the sport is there and as long as there are some there are people who will still need this sport the future now is to uh, look for more ways to make it better what i love about athletics is is the simplicity of the sport um, Many coaches, they make it very complicated, but actually running is just putting one foot in front of the other foot. That's all. And if you're one step faster than the other one, you won. That's the question everyone around the world wants to know, is why, why are the best runners coming from here? Um, I think there's a number of factors. Uh, and really, it's the same things that, that people have been saying for a long time now. One is the inspiration. Like, people here want to be runners. In, in Western society, there are there are so many other things for, for people to do. What they do is here is they eat, they train and they sleep. There is nothing else. There is no coffee shop. There is no shopping mall. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. So when they come back from the training, they eat something and they sleep. And I believe that's very important. I think many people, particularly the Western world, tend to think that you can go into any village in North Rift and you can pick a person at random and make him into a world champion or an Olympic champion, but not quite true. It's not as simple as that. A lot of people also have done, and experts have done research over the years on finding out why. Why North Rift, why E10? And nobody has yet come up with a satisfactory answer to say it's, it's the altitude, it's the diet, it's the physiology of the person, it's, the, it's the, the background of the people, where they came from, etc., etc. All sorts of theories have been put forward. But very few researchers ever want to touch on the idea of how hard the athletes train. Very few of them, and it's only when those who visit here and come here and follow the life of an athlete that they begin to realize 
that these athletes really, really train. And it's not just even uh, the, 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 the quantity or the amount of value training you do, but kind of the quality of training also. That these athletes are very refined down to the minutest detail. You know, some people think because a Kenyan has so much talent, oh, it's so easy to train them. It is not. There's no easy way, there's no shortcut, there's no secret.